Assalamu everyone, uh, I am Dr. Abdul Wahab from Exile Official Surgery Department at King Edward Medical University. We have made a short uh, video presentation on the CT scan of head and neck region, basically focusing on the normal anatomy of the head and neck, uh, both in the soft tissue as well as the hard tissues. We will uh, uh, discuss the, both the coronal views as well as the exit views and how to identify muscles. Uh, vessels, uh, different spaces, the structure of the orbit, the sinuses, and uh, the suprahyoid neck as well as the intrahyoid neck. So uh, let's start with it and see how it goes. All right, uh, now let's start with uh, uh, the first part of the presentation. It has three parts. First, we will deal with the um, the coronal and the axial slices of the uh, face from starting from the infraorbital region up till the base of the mandible. The second part will include the uh, base of the skull, the temporal and the ear, the uh, temporal bone and the ear, and uh, the third part in the suprahyoid neck and the infrahyoid neck. And the contents of the orbit will be in the part two. Now, uh, let's start. Uh, axial section, um, this is the basic CT. Uh, everything in the CT scan can be identified uh, on an axial CT. The coronal CT and uh, the sagittal CT, they uh, are just supportive. Now, uh, starting with the axial slices, uh, here you see uh, these small hypodense areas. These are the esophageal sinuses. They are uh, frequently large in number. Uh, in the midline, you can see the nasal septum coming on. The, the number 23 is the uh, frontal bone, the part of the frontal bone that is visible. Uh, the beside on the lateral borders of it is the frontal process of the maxilla. Here you can see the orbit. It is almost in the mid of the orbit. We are taking this axial section. Uh, these are the sphenoidal sinuses, the two large sinuses with a midline between them. Uh, this is the middle cranial fossa. The patient is a bit tilted, so you can see the right uh, middle cranial fossa, and the left is not uh, clearly marked. Uh, these oblique lines are the sphenozygomatic sutures, and this is the basically the zygomatic bone and the um, the body of zygoma. These are the uh, ethmoidal air sinuses. Here you can see this is the clivus, and uh, there it is the the canal, uh, the auditory canal that runs. Uh, this uh, long structure, uh, a tube-like structure, this is basically the carotid canal which you see at the level of the sphenoidal sinuses. Coming to the next slide section, uh, this is a bit inferior slide which shows uh, the maxillary sinuses bilaterally on number 81. Uh, this 151 is the zygoma. Uh, this is not a, the zygomatic arch. It should be clearly uh, differentiated. If you trace it back uh, to the towards the condylar region and towards the external caustic meters, here you will see the uh, uh, the zygomatic arch, which will be uh, visible in the few next slides. Here uh, are starting the pterygoid plates. Uh, which will be uh, visible in the next slides. Uh, this is uh, this uh, tube-like sort of structure is called the uh, in, uh, the middle turbinates, and uh, this is uh, obviously the nasal septum, uh, a bit deviated. Uh, this is the nasolacrimal duct, uh, fairly visible. Uh, in most of the slides, uh, it is not uh, visible. Uh, you need an appropriate slide for that. This is again the clivus, and these are the mastoid air cells. These bilateral uh, uh, hyperdense areas, which you see, are the condyles. Okay, so this is the condylar level, and this small structure on the left side, which you see, is the coronoid process of the mandible. Now, this is an HRCT. Uh, here is the body of the zygoma. Here is the zygomatic arch. Uh, these are the two pterygoid plates. Uh, the pterygoid muscles are attached. Here you can clearly see the uh, 
the mus the muscle the lateral trigeminal muscle starting from the lateral trigeminal pad up to the uh, uh, fusing at the condyle of the mandible uh, these are the sinuses uh, this is the nasal septum and this is the nas uh, the nose the internal nose and these black areas these are uh, truly air filled cavities uh, this is the uh, infratemporal fossa which you see the hypodense area behind the zygomatic bone these two uh, opacities which you see the hypodense areas these are the coronoid process of the mandible this, this is the clivus and this is the posterior cranial fossa now jumping on the next slide uh, this is slide taken at the level of the um, palate this is the palate here you can see a u-shaped palate this is the ramus of mandible the patient is again tilted on the uh, other contralateral side you can uh, clearly differentiate the condyle from the coronoid this anterior is the coronoid this is the lateral pterygoid clearly visible and these are the basically the long muscles of the neck which uh, are uh, uh, we, you need to know the anatomy uh, for identifying these these are the very principal spaces and this is the nose the nasopharynx here starts this is again the posterior cranial fossa this is the occipital bone and this is the temporal bone <coughs> and then jumping on to the next slide these are uh, a little more inferior palate this is the uh, ramus mandible here you can see the masseter muscle here this hypodense area bilaterally this is the uh, parotid gland which uh, extend posterior uh, medially and uh, 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 behind the uh, the ramus of mandible this is the peripheral space uh, this is the where the pharynx starts uh, this is uh, again the nasal uh, the nasal pharynx and uh, or or you can say the junction of the nasal and the oropharynx uh, this is the foramen magnum and uh, we uh, this is the occipital bone and these are the posterior muscles of the of the uh, head and neck these uh, small structures these are the basically arteries which have taken up the contrast this is a contrast CT uh, in a contrast CT you can uh, identify the, the muscles very clearly from the fat this is the fat space does not contain this does not mean that there is air in it it always contains the fat and the lymph tissues this white layer is the skin this is taken at the uh, uh, level of the mandible these are the uh, almost at the level of the angle of uh, mandible these are the facets uh, this is the c1 vertebra and this is the dense of the c2 which is visible in between it now uh, here is passing the spinal cord this is the internal parotid artery these two small uh, 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 structures which you see around are the vertebral arteries and here you can see the parotid gland very clearly it is passing behind the mandible and into the medial aspect of the ramus again the peripheral space and this is the medial pterygoid which is inserted at the angle of the the angle of mandible at the medial aspect these are the teeth small round structures again teeth mandible lower level masseter muscle uh, here uh, you, uh, this is the area with the tongue and the next few slides we can uh, clearly differentiate between the <coughs> uh, the uh, the extrinsic muscles of the tongue this is the pharynx this is the parotid gland and this is the c2 vertebra now from uh, one side slide above you can clearly see the dents this is the internal jugular and this is the uh, uh, these are the carotid arteries external and the external carotid arteries here is a shadow where you can see the sternocleidomastoid okay this is the spinal cord and this is taken at the level c2 vertebra these are the posterior belly of the gastrix which you see here now here you can differentiate between the muscles of the uh, um, the uh, the muscles of the tongue uh, this uh, on the lateral aspect here you see an elongated 
shadow this is of the mylohyoid muscle in the mid it is the genioglossus muscle and uh, here you see a curved muscle this is the hyoglossus all right this is the hyoglossus which is the curved one this curved one this is the uh, the mylohyoid and here is the genio glossus now again <coughs> uh, coming on to the next slide uh, there it is it taken more inferiorly almost touching the base of the mandible there again you can see the mylohyoid and this is the tongue here you see these shadows bilateral hypodense areas as compared to the muscles uh, whenever we talk about uh, hypodense or hyperdense it is basically compared to the brain parenchyma mm, we take brain, brain parenchyma as a uh, standard and uh, everything which uh, sh uh, which shows the shade of gray ac uh, uh, in um, relation to that brain parenchyma is called isodense and accordingly hypodense and hyperdense this is again the pharynx this is taken at the level of c3 vertebra this uh, uh, rounded structure which you see is the internal uh, jugular vein and with is uh, with it on the anterior middle aspect of it is the uh, the internal and the external carotid arteries uh, this is the uh, sternocleidomastoid here it is the parotid gland <coughs> now uh, uh, there the muscles which you see in the uh, next slide here uh, as we told you it was the uh, the the myohyoid was on the lateral aspect and the genioglossus was there now at the chin level this oblique shadow will be of the digastric the anterior belly of the digastric and here posterior lateral aspect it shows the uh, the bilateral uh, submandibular glands Okay, and uh, now this uh, again, uh, the uh, the largest strong structure which you see, which is taken up the contrast, is the internal jugular vein, and these are the two internal and external carotid. This uh, shadow, which is present outside the uh, the sternocleidomastoid, is basically the external jugular vein, and if it is present in in the lower slices, it will be present uh, on the anterior aspect of the sternocleidomastoid that will be the anterior jugular vein all right that will be the interior jugular here it is the external jugular internal jugular and both the carotids taken at the level of c3 these uh, here is the spinal cord and these are the posterior muscles of the the muscles of the back of the neck now uh, this uh, digastric muscle is basically the differentiating line between the head and the neck region. This shadow which you see is of the platysma. This uh, this is a paper thin sort of um, muscle platysma. Now uh, again uh, another inferior slide uh, quite similar to it. Here you can see the diameter of the on the internal jugular. Now, uh, jumping out of the coronal views, uh, coronal views is basically the easiest of them all. Uh, we'll start from the most. Uh, mm, uh, we will start from the most anterior most aspect of it. This is. Uh, these are the frontal sinuses which you see. And uh, um, this is the frontal process of maxilla. And here you see the frontal process of maxilla this is the nasal bone um, <coughs> it is not much uh, clearly very appreciated you can't diagnose anything on the coronal CT regarding these bones this is again the uh, uh, on the second slide the frontal sinuses uh, the deviated nasal septum the turbinates um, this is basically a, a heart tissue window uh, here you cannot appreciate the muscles as you could appreciate all these muscles, the structures, the glands, the vessels, here in uh, in a heart tissue window, is, it is almost imp uh, in, almost impossible. However, some of the muscles can be identified, like the orbit or the muscle of the orbit can be identified. 
but vaguely, very vaguely. This is the incisive canal which you see uh, on number 38 and uh, these are the teeth, uh, this is the chin and uh, these are the most specific, uh, these are the, uh, the maxillary sinuses which you see here. Uh, next comes, uh, these are the ethmoidal sinuses, small multiple ethmoidal sinuses. Uh, here are mm, the turbinates which you can see. Uh, this is the orbit. Uh, the frontal, uh, um, the frontal sinuses will be barely visible here. Now, this is a clear slide in which you can see these uh, inferior turbinates. Um, this is the middle meatus which you see, and uh, pretty much it will be visible on the. Uh, we can uh, differentiate on the next slide. Now, one important structure here. It is the number 43 that is the infraorbital canal which you can appreciate and secondly this is the inferior dental canal which you uh, or you can see the mandibular foramen from where the uh, the mental nerve arises again uh, this is the best slide which in which you can differentiate uh, or, or in which you can appreciate all of these uh, uh, turbinates this very small turbinate hardly visible um, this is the uh, middle and then the biggest uh, inferior turbinate. These are the maxillary sinuses, these are above the ethmoidal sinuses. Here again you can see the turbinates here. Uh, <coughs> it's quite easy to differentiate everything on the uh, coronal views. Uh, these bilateral structures are the zygomatic arch that is uh, bilaterally present on 151. And uh, on uh, this is the uh, inferior or uh, orbital fissure which you see. We are present uh, almost at the midline of uh, or the most uh, uh, you can say the, uh, the posterior aspect of the orbit. Uh, this slide is taken at that level. Now even more posterior we go here you can appreciate uh, clearly appreciate the spinoidal sinuses. Now the ethmoidal have vanished. Posteriorly comes the in uh, this is a sort of landmark which you can see uh, one uh, single septum that uh, separates both of the sinuses and uh, here is the nose the air field this is the ramus of the mandible and the uh, orbit as uh, the globe has almost vanished here these are again the uh, zygomatic process of uh, uh, sorry the uh, zygomatic arches present. Uh, in this slide, uh, again zygomatic arches, this is the ramus of mandible, the spinoidal sinuses, this is, is the, uh, this is the nasopharynx cerastoide, and here you can appreciate the pterygoid plates, the medial pterygoid plates and the uh, lateral pterygoids, almost horseshoe shaped. Now, thank you for listening. Um, second part of this lecture, uh, this small video presentation will include the base of the skull, the anatomy of the base of skull, and uh, the orbital anatomy, ear and the temporal lobe. Uh, the things which are concerned uh, about uh, in the orbit is the normal anatomy, uh, secondly, diagnosis of the intracoronal and the extracoronal lesions, and uh, the degree of enophthalmus and degree of hypothalmus, degree of uh, proptosis that uh, will be taken into account, and how to evaluate on a CT that uh, up to what level the uh, up to what degree the proptosis or the enophthalmus is present. The part 3 will include the suprahyoid neck and the uh, infrahyoid neck. If you like this lecture, please uh, hit the like button on the YouTube channel and, uh, if and kindly please subscribe to our channel and uh, if you have any suggestions or even any knowledge to share on it, please uh, uh, add it in the comment section below. So thanks for watching.